All right, guys, Shotty T here with an Alliance War video. This is war number three for season 20 and forgot to do the, the intro to the fight. So I just paused it so I can record it. But once again, the opponent is running stubborn and the team I brought this time is Nick Fury, Havoc and Human Torch. So we got two new attackers, so no Venom for the first time. So the very first fight, we have Mordo on the Evan Flow knockdown. So we're just gonna use Nick Fury to keep it simple. I probably could have used any any of my champs in this fight, but I decided to go with Nick Fury because I have the second life to play with. So if I happen to lose any health, I can, I'm gonna be using Human Torch and Havoc in uh, quite a few fights. So especially the, war, the more important fights of the war that is. So I wanna make sure I spare as much as possible. All right. So we got that. And the thing about Mordo, for those that are still having trouble against him, is that when he's in his total mode, where he's getting in power game mode, you can use that as an opportunity to back him into the corner and just use a heavy attack. Probably like 95% of the time, he's not gonna retaliate. Every once in a while, he'll ambush you, but it's pretty good. And he's not gonna hurt you, he hits like a pillow, so it's worth going in to try to get rid of that, because you don't wanna get an SP3 and run into more problems where he gains furies and stuff, but that was a pretty straightforward fight. Next fight, we got Ebony Maw. Uh, he's a stubborn defender, with, of course, with the heavy attack that can't be interrupted, so we're not gonna have a comedy of errors like we did last war with the Havoc situation. This one is gonna be a little bit more straightforward. So, uh, and also one thing I wanted to mention is at the very end of that Modoc fight, you saw that I carried him and I was able to hit him because with Nick Fury, he had five tactical charges. The opponent came out of And you're gonna see something else regarding charges bypassing stuff here as you can see i had falter on me but the miss failed with human torch if your temperature is above 10 your attacks cannot miss so you're going to see it very you're going to see it once again before the end of this fight i'll have i got the falter debuff on me right there but as you can see i hit him so just a small tidbit there for those that struggle against ebony maw Human Torch, he slays him. Now, next fight here, we got Quark. He's unawakened, which makes the fight much easier. But even if he was awakened, it wouldn't affect who I'm bringing in. The only thing I would have to worry about is him shrugging off my parries. But actually, and shrugging off other debuffs. But against Havoc, he gets punished for shrugging off his uh, plasma debuffs. But this is going to be a straightforward fight. I did leave up the long distance relationship No, just to have some backup healing if needed. Because I always like to save potions whenever possible. But it's a pretty straightforward fight. Havoc is a great counter for Kord. All of his attacks, you don't have to worry about throwing damage if he was awakened. So here we're just going to use our plasma. And we're just going to throw our... I want to say I threw my special here. No, I didn't. Yeah, because this is one of those cases that if you have more power than the opponent, they steal your power. And I guess I didn't realize that. And that's the reason why everything got thrown off just right there. Um, but, again, I have that willpower with the weakness debuff. So I'm just going to purposely get close to him towards the end just to try to get that buff back. Debuff back, I mean, there it is. So, it's fight at 100%, so no harm done. So, couldn't have asked to get off to a better start. Now, the next two fights are gonna be very tricky. This is why I brought Havoc. Um, the Nick Fury, as you saw in the last video, I used Sunspot. I could have one shot him with that guy, but I overboosted it with his, uh, his power boost. It was necessary to use the power boost, but I didn't have 100%. 150% one, unfortunately. So I'm waiting for that to come back into the rotation. And I'm gonna make sure I get three of those because I have enough loyalty to, to get that. Um, but we're gonna use a 200% power boost and a attack boost for the special attack. But it's gonna end up being overkill 
Um, and Havoc, I usually have him on defense, but we had another uh, Alliance member that developed that got a six-star Havoc. So we're using his Havoc on defense for diversity. I mean, we don't have the greatest diversity, but we try to maintain at least decent diversity. But in these higher tiers, it really doesn't matter as much because most of the time, the difference between winning and losing is the attack bonus or expiration in some cases due to the difficulty. But the idea in this fight is just going to do this mix matter so you can't repeat the same attack, otherwise there'll be an evade. So I'm just going to parry medium, light, medium, and mix in some heavies here and there. And my thought process was to take Nick Fury out in his first life without throwing any, without throwing my SB3. And then once he gets to his second life, is when I'll throw my SB3 and hopefully that kills him. And if it doesn't, then I'll have that 200% power boost to build back up to likely three bars of power because of the amount of damage that it's gonna deal and just kill him that way. So that's the game plan. And it's always good to have a plan when you go into a fight. So, and trying to combo him enough to keep those prowess charges down in case I have to block some of his specials because it does take a lot of damage there. Now, I probably could have just thrown the SP3 right here, but I tried to wait out his second life as much as I could, and I probably still could have threw it there. So I basically ended up taking some unnecessary um, block damage because this SP3 is, I didn't even need to throw another one. This was overkill. So that was a little bit of a rookie mistake. Probably didn't need to use the, <laughs> the power boost. I mean, that was just overkill. But the real reason why I brought Havoc was for this next fight. This no was a crafty placement because you have uh, Force of Will, which is a immune to ability accuracy reduction, and you have Crumbling Armor. So that means you're going to be guaranteed to have Crumbling Armor on this fight. So the typical Havoc counters like um, Warlock or any of all those other armor up champs that are techs, you're subject to have your armor broken and with the aspect of this war not the war the aspect of this node where the attacker gains an unstoppable and evade it's very likely you're gonna incur an armor break debuff and and if the plasma reaches 10 and detonates you're gonna take a whole bunch of damage and only two people that you can well actually four people that you can use for this fight and not worry about taking plasma damage when it detonates is Havoc himself. Uh, he's immune to that damage. Now, he's not immune to feedback damage, as you're going to see here. I tried to interrupt a heavy with a heavy, but he still was unstoppable, so he still hit me. So, as you can see, I'm taking some major feedback damage, but now that that feedback debuff has expired, I can go back and heal with the willpower of the plasma debuffs, as well as the armor but the other champs that are great against havoc for this particular node two of them you probably would never think of but they're the red and the blue cyclops because they don't take any damage from beam attacks so you can actually tank his entire sp3 and take no damage but that goes the same the other way around too if you did an sp3 against havoc you deal no damage to him either so really it just becomes a fisticuff match uh, you can take feedback damage, of course, but the pla but the plasma detonation, the beam attacks, take no damage, deal no damage to Cyclops and Havoc. Now, um, as far as the third one, of course, you have Cy uh, not Cyclops, but Colossus, because he cannot be armor broken unless it's a tech champ he's going against. But I don't I wouldn't have felt as comfortable using him against Nick Fury. But anyway, that was another overkill with an SP3, so I really didn't need the power boost. But next fight we have um Modoc who has suicide, so that heavy that special attack actually does some pretty good damage there. But again, Nick Fury, he has this he has this um still got my first life to play with. So really, you can go in this fight pretty confidently. And there's gonna be some things that I learned about the mo the interactions between Nick Fury and MODOK. Um, 
and I'll find that lesson out more so in the second fight as you saw I have two back to back Modocs. So this Modoc is much easier and you'll see why in the next fight. Um, so we're gonna do that. And as you can see, I did SP1, had five tactical charges. So I just had the impression that if I have five tactical charges, uh, it'll ignore the auto block. And like I said, this fight wasn't long enough for me to, to realize that wasn't the case. But you'll see in the next fight, uh, I fooled myself. But this fight went pretty well. Took some special attack damage at the beginning, but finished well, still in my first life. Now this next Modoc, now he's awakened, but that really doesn't do anything defensively unless you're like, unless he's facing multiple opponents in a row, like if I died, basically. But here, we, this particular note is different from the aspect that there's added power gain with more debuffs on the opponent. And if they're bleeding, the power gain is doubled at that rate. And so with all these bleeds that are stacking up, he's gaining power at an insane rate. So there are more specials to avoid and more times triggering stubborn. And as you can see in that very last fight, I had used the SP1 and I had five tactical charges and he didn't get blocked. And for some reason I thought that the auto block, the, the five tactical charges, not only apply it to evade, but also apply it to auto block, but apparently it doesn't. And I learned that lesson out the hard way in this particular fight. But that time it worked, but I'm guessing it's because of disorient with the ability, ability, accuracy, reduction. But again, it didn't it still didn't register me at that point in time. I just thought maybe that was a glitch. Maybe I had slipped the four type of charges in, which is why he auto blocked. So I was kind of in denial, but, and as you can see, he didn't auto block it there. So that's the reason. So I had two straight SP1s when he had that armor active that he didn't auto block. So I was just, okay, I have five charges. So I can just freely just keep building to SP1 and just easy game. So that was the game plan. So once again, I'm gonna get to SP1. And this time he auto blocks it and I get punished. <laughs> So now I'm on my, with my second life. Now I got more problems to worry about here. And I didn't want to be in my second life by this point. And so the big difference between that MODOK and the other MODOK was the tale of two MODOKs. It's <laughs> probably part of the title of this video. But um, but yeah, we're now the good news is that we have over 15 tactical charges. So I, I do know that the auto block <laughs> you can ignore that when you're unblockable so it's just a matter of just not getting hit and, and being smart but i take another clip to the foot and i get a clutch intercept there and just to get rid of that fight that wasn't the fight i was looking for i really wanted to save his second life for another fight that would be much more difficult and that's going to be a little costly, a little foreshadowing there. Uh, but the next fight here, we have Dr. Doom. Just like last war, we're gonna use Human Torch with the pre-fight ability. And by the way, my six hour boost is still active for this fight. This is all in the first night of the war. Um, so this one is gonna go a little bit smoother than the one, the previous video. So there won't be any Mario animations in this fight. And for the most part, I'm pretty comfortable fighting against Dr. Doom. You know, just nailing the intercepts too, so that so the, the CPU is cooperating greatly. So I'm building up the Nova Flames. And this was probably the quickest Dr. Doom kill I have ever had. So we got one more fight before I go to bed. So we're gonna go ahead and use the boost here. Now my thought process is Havoc is done for the war, so we're just gonna go ahead and use him against Mojo and save Human Torch for the next fight because I, I, that next fight, it can be tricky. So I didn't wanna use lose any unnecessary health in this fight against Mojo with Havoc with Human Torch. So I decided to go with Havoc. Uh, Havoc, he does have a bit of energy resistance. So if I were to get that 
Hater debuff is not going to deal as much damage. And then also, uh, if I do get, if I do take passive energy damage, it's going to build up my plasma charges. So I can use that to nuke him down as well. So that was the thought process. But on to the fight. So getting better at fighting against Mojo, I just don't have a lot of experience fighting him. Usually if we, when we faced him in a flow war, somebody else usually took him. I mean, I do have the magic, but uh, the, the times that I tried with magic, I epically failed. But that is an area of improvement. Um, but I've gotten better with magic since then, but we just haven't had the opportunity to have a flow war against some other Mojo. Every war has been stubborn for the past this past season and also the first three wars of this season. But anyways, um, I heard Mo I heard Nick Fury is a pretty good answer for him too, but I didn't use him at the time. I didn't know that at the time. So we're gonna launch our SP3, thinking that this will kill him. Um, the, I think the power boost for the mutant had expired by now. But unfortunately, that did not kill him, so we still have more work to do. And we we'll probably have to beta SB2. I'm not comfortable evading that SB2 entirely. But now we just gotta give him the lunch special. I'm gonna take the SB3, so I don't mind that. But as you can see, those plasma charges built up. So I'm just gonna detonate those, get some feedback. And that's going to kill the rest of them right there. And that's it. Alright, so not the cleanest fight, but it's still a one shot. Now, before I get to this next fight, I decided to look around to see where we were in the war. Um, and to this point, uh, we're up 14 to 8 as a, a whole alliance. And... And, and this is just before I go to bed. And we, as a battle group, we haven't died yet. And it's going to be a little bit of a jinx there. And just looking at our defense, so far they haven't reached tier two. We have six kills. Um, just scouting who, who died. And I always try to project how many other deaths they're going to have just based off who the opponent brought and thinking of how they're going to struggle against certain opponents. Uh, they, I think they ended up dying twice to this Nick Fury and um, and died three times to that thing. But I'll show you the recap at the very end. Um, but yeah, but that's, the, that's our defense there. You get a little bit of a look at it. But uh, maybe I'll do like a, a full video on our defensive setup there. I'm not gonna talk about how you can counter it. I'll just show you the show you the nose and what difficulties they bring. But um, but yeah, that's that. So now we wake up the next morning. We're gonna hop into this guillotine ninety nine fight. We're gonna apply some, I think some twenty percent boost here. Now I have fought with Human Torch against guillotine on this note before. In fact. There's a very similar note to this in 6.4.3, the Dark Hawk chapter in the Stunning Reflection Path that actually has a guillotine 99 and that has way more hit power. So, um, and a way bigger health pool. So if I can handle that fight, I can definitely handle this one. But we're still gonna apply the boost mostly for the next fight. Um, so might as well use it for this one. So the idea here is to get her inflicted with an incinerate and build my temperature to 10 so that way I don't miss because as you saw in that Ebony, Ebony Moth fight, I wasn't missing whenever I had whenever I had a culture buff. So we're just building the temperature and we're gonna bake some, we're gonna parry some SP1s so that way we can build up more smolders as well which also increase my temperature by 5 when getting struck with it. Uh, and there you go. So now we have one smolder. So it makes my incinerate last just a little bit longer. So we're just gonna slowly build that temperature up. Don't have to worry about her going invisible on me. And by the way, you can you can put the invisibility and cool down every time you knock her down. 
So that's the reason why you saw me just two short combos, just to get rid of the stunning reflection. So just a little bit of a cycle here I'm doing here. So now we're up to 17 temperature and the temperature is not falling as quickly now because I have two smolders now. And we're gonna have three after this one. Now we just gotta get the incinerate back. And actually I did trigger it that time, but temperature's rising. And as you can see, I did not miss her because it was over 10. So Human Torch is very useful for a lot of fights. Obviously great for the Abyss. I do plan on doing the second Abyss run very soon. Um, I may do a video to preview what I'm gonna bring. Obviously the most difficult fight is gonna be Luke Cage. So I probably, before I tackle it, I'm gonna practice a few times against him against, with um, Stealth Suit Spider or probably even she-Hulk, I have her at rank four, so I'm, I may just just wait to rank five her and try my chances with her. I saw the Metal Sonic dudes video for that fight. I can probably emulate what he did. So this next fight, as you see, I had put some potions in Nick Fury before I boosted to make sure I got the maximum effect of my healing. And I realized he's in the second life, but I'm just giving myself more of a buffer at the beginning to take some block damage. So by the time I get to 30%, I'll get to where I want to be in this fight. Because I decide to put a power boost on, start with one bar power. And the goal is just to get to 15 uh, tactical charge as soon as possible so I can just be unblockable the rest of the fight and only, and only have to worry about stubborn. But as you can see, there's one more element of this node, which is called brute force. And it's really not fun, but I just have to take the medicine and make sure I just hit them um, so I don't trigger it. And as you can see, I'm, I'm trying not to get intercepted by him by just randomly dashing in there just to get rid of the brute force. But it's not going like I want to go right now. And again, I would have had more of a cushion if I didn't take all that damage from that second MODOK fight. And I do realize the stubborn is still on me right now, I'm just trying to fight myself out of the corner. All right, so we're gonna do a five hit combo. I'm almost ready to unleash my attack. And at this point, I just thought about just getting to SP3. But then he caught me off guard with this special one. I was about to launch my SP3 and really get myself out the corner and just unleash my attack, but didn't get a chance to do that. So I decided to just go in with Havoc. I just decided to take my chances here. We're gonna just heal him up and just, because he's unawakened, I don't have to worry about the protection. So I'll just use the plasma to kill him and make sure that the stubborn isn't active when I launch my SP3. And I did duel against him before going into this fight. I can interrupt his heavy attack with my heavy. I think I'll take advantage of that tactic maybe once in this fight. But um, as you can see there, just trying to make sure I get to the 15 rock stacks. Tricker Stubborn. I really want to take advantage of these plasma charges. So we got nine. So now he's going to melt a little bit. But again, Stubborn kind of took that away. But again, the bigger picture is just to get to my SP3 and just kill him. I don't really care. And decided to do a combo that put him over the edge. I was wanting to try to get one more heavy attack in there to put that prowess to three, but at this point, I'm just gonna roll with it and go and just hope it kills him. Uh, it doesn't kill him there, but I do have those plasma charges and they detonate it. So, so Havoc for the win, wreaking Havoc. It'll probably be the secondary title of this video, but, um, but that ended up being the very first death of the, of the war, so I jinxed myself. And as you can see, they did not finish this section once again. 
Uh, so we did win the war once again due to exploration and defenders remaining. Our defense kicked rock, kicked ass, 45 kills. Our attack bonus much better this time. And your boy got 26 defender kills.